Hey there, home chefs. Pretty much everyone, well, especially here in the UK, has a comfort food that's their go-to on the pub menu. For me, that's cottage pie, a savoury, meaty filling topped with a creamy, slightly crispy mashed potato. Come on, it's just banging. So today I'm going to show you a tasty home chef style cottage pie that means you haven't even got to leave the house next time you want some good old comforting pub grub. Let's cook. Straight in, the first thing we need to address is the meat. If you're sitting there going, hold on, isn't it called shepherd's pie? Allow me to clarify. Shepherd's and cottage pie are the same meal essentially, but with different meats in the filling. Shepherd's pie uses lamb mince, see, lamb, sheep, shepherd, makes sense. Whereas cottage pie uses beef mince instead, see, beef, cows, visible from a cottage, maybe, okay, I don't get that link. But either way, that's why I'm saying cottage pie, not shepherd's pie. Now, to get the best out of your cottage pie, we have to make our own mince. The trick is to get everything cut into shape and cold. I'm cutting the meat into strips to fit into the mincer better, with a bit of length so the mince doesn't come out like crumbs. Then it's into the freezer for 30 minutes or so, so the meat is easier to cut through. Don't forget to include the mincing utensils in the freezer. And now, no stress if you don't have a KitchenAid with a mincing attachment like me, that can be quite pricey. Using a normal food processor works just as well, although with this kind of blade, you'll want to dice the meat to ease the workload. However you're grinding the beef, this is your chance to bring out your inner home chef and experiment with different ratios of fat. Cut the fat off the meat and try adding different amounts until you find a mix that you like. A typical addition to make sure the mince is not too dry is to add some pork. You can experiment with that too. I like to mix in about 20% pork and then less of the beef fat. I like to go full fat for maximum flavor, so be sure to go with what suits you. Then, the other key to good home ground beef is to cook it off separately to get some color in. Get a deep pan on a high heat and add some olive oil. Make sure it's hot, otherwise the meat will turn gray and boil rather than sear and caramelize. As it's cooking, continuously break up the beef so it doesn't clump together. This affects how it cooks and we want maximum browning. And after seven or eight minutes, you should have some lovely ground beef, which we can season with salt and pepper liberally, and then scoop out and drain the fat out with a sieve. Then, using the same pan, don't wipe it out, and instead, heat up some more oil and bring the temperature down to medium. This gets a bit more of the good stuff into our filling. Add in some diced onion and carrots, and then traditionally celery is used, but I think the texture is not quite right for a cottage pie, so I recommend leeks instead. It adds more delicious onion flavor and melts beautifully into the meat filling. Let that cook and sweat for five minutes or so, and then add in some very finely chopped garlic before a generous helping of tomato puree or paste, and a dash of Worcestershire sauce or soy sauce if you don't have it. Now don't be stingy with the puree as it adds great depth of flavor to the gravy but make sure it's really well mixed in to bring out the best of it and cook for a further two or three minutes. Now it's time for the good stuff. Add about 250 milliliters of a good dry red wine and really cook it in until it's reduced by about two thirds and the alcohol is cooked off. If you can scrape the bottom and see these streaks, you're pretty close. But that's not all. Next is some beef stock. The higher quality, the better this will taste, but don't knock the store-bought stuff as we can elevate it in other ways. And I certainly enjoy the convenience. And with that in, we can bring back our beef mince, and we can start to see our beautiful creation come to life. The smell is already bringing me right to the pub and making me feel all warm inside. Let that come up to a simmer, and then we can take this up a notch further with a few aromatics. I've made a small bunch here with some rosemary and thyme sprigs, which will let take a bath, add some bath salts, uh, I mean seasoning, and let everything simmer with the lid off for about 25 minutes. I'll leave that there. No, change my at this point, we should have a nicely reduced, concentrated beef filling, but we are not done just yet, no sir. Add a scoop of creme fraiche to the mix to thicken it up a bit and get some wonderful creaminess too. Look at that, just like your local does it. And then, I don't know why, but peas just work in a pie. But it's important we use frozen ones, otherwise they'll overcook as this has still got to go in the oven. Kill the heat and put that to the side to rest while we make the other component, the mashed potato. For the topping, we want velvety, decadent, cheesy mashed potato to really nail this pie. So we'll need some Maris Piper or russet potatoes, peeled and diced quite small to cook through easier and quicker. Then pop them in the saucepan with some cold water, add a touch of salt, and bring to the boil and simmer for about 15 minutes or until the potatoes fall apart with a bit of light pressure. Next, drain the potatoes and put them back in the saucepan and let them steam dry just for a few minutes to really help with the ricing. Yes, I said ricing. Definitely use a potato ricer for this mash. We wanted to get it extra smooth. 
At this point, you could push it through a fine mesh sieve to get every little imperfection out, but for a cottage pie, I think this is enough. So hit it with a good pinch of salt and lots of cold butter. I cannot stress this enough, don't hold back on the butter if you want the best mash. Cold butter makes it so velvety and delicious. It's not the healthiest, but it's damn tasty. And on that note, pour a small amount of warmed up heavy cream and mix that in as well. Comfort food is there to comfort us, so go big or go home. Warming it up before helps it blend better with the warm potatoes and will help us reach that perfect smoothness. Finally, add in some grated cheddar cheese. And don't worry if the mash has gone a bit cold at this point, the cheese will melt nicely in the oven. And then as an optional, grate over some fresh nutmeg for a bit of soothing warmth and aroma, and you'll have the creamiest, most delicious mash you'll have ever made. Perfect for sitting atop our glorious cottage pie. Speaking of which, let's build this pie. Ladle in all the beef filling into an oven-proof dish and spread around into an even layer. Then, I'm going to try piping the mash on top for a little flare, which I immediately regret as the dish is quite large. I think Gordon Ramsay's fork method makes a lot more sense here. Fork the top. Yep, yep, I hear you. But we persevere and the result is a neat topping with lovely ridges that are going to crisp up in the oven. And sprinkle over some garlic salt to finish and we can get this into the oven at 200 degrees celsius for around 25 to 30 minutes enough so that we get a really nice browning on the mash honestly biting into this pie is like heaven for me it's best to let that rest for a while to let the filling firm up a bit but then it's on to the best part plating up i'm going with a simple slice in the middle of a plate as pub grub does not need to be fancy and as it's such a complete meal on its own it doesn't really need size or anything but i'll add some sauteed spinach leaves for a touch of color Bam! A super fulfilling cottage pie, as good as your local, but made right at home. I for one am dining on comfort food tonight. If you enjoyed that recipe, be sure to drop this video a like, and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Until the next time though, get cooking, and may the zen be with you.